Hello everyone, I'm your host Tara Glor and welcome to the Radiance at Any Age Summit 2015. This is the place where 21 expert guest speakers will come together to show us how to unlock our fountain of youth and share the secrets to a healthier and more balanced life. Today I'm delighted to welcome Evita Rampart. She is the goddess of wellness and tigress of business, a published author, journalist, and transformational CEO, uplifting and raising leaders in wellness. In 2000, Evita cured herself from ovarian cancer naturally through cleansing and detoxing. She lost 83 pounds in four months with fruit and turned her life around through conscious awakening. She has authored three books, How to Cleanse in Seven Days, The Bliss of Cancer, and Bad Ass Detox, and is currently writing her fourth titled Tiger Woman Feminine Strategies in the Jungle of Business. Evita is one of the stars in the movies Hungry for Change and Food Heals. She's a transformational leader, celebrity coach, and a trendsetter in the rapidly growing wellness industry. Her exclusive coaching programs and retreats are uplifting and raising leaders in wellness. Thank you so much for joining us today, Evita, and welcome to the summit. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so let's get started. Would you mind sharing more of your personal journey into health and wellness and how you got to this point in your life and career? Yes, um, my journey began in the year 2000 uh, with dreadful news. I found out that I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and um, my life was saved because before I was told that, I actually met a woman who, was, who prepared me for this news. She was a psychic, a healer, and a native ethnic healer from Ukraine. And she basically scanned my body and she said, you have fixing gallbladder stones, you, have, uh, you are de developing diabetes, your pancreas is very weak, and you have something serious going on on your ovaries. So go to the doctors and get tested. So that psychic, you know, spiritual healer, energy healer, sent me to the, to, to, to the doctors actually to get tested, right? Mm -hmm. And she told me about cleansing and detoxing and, and healthy nutrition and, and healing with, with food. And at that time, I didn't want to hear anything about it. Yes, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'll go to the doctors. I'll, 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 I'll get tested, but I don't, want, I don't want to do any cleansing protocols or I don't want to go fasting or you know, do some weird things like coffee enemas or juicing. It sounded disgusting and unattractive to me because I was hooked on fast food. Yes? Mm -hmm. And, you know, I lived in Poland right after communism. Fast food was the symbol of freedom that we just gained, yes? Yeah. So borders have opened up, capitalism came, and, uh, you know, you, just like in China today, you would celebrate your birthday at McDonald's, you would, uh, you know, Coca-Cola was drank every day a liter. <laughs> and there was no words of warning whatsoever, yes? So um, back then, I lived in a very, I had a very, I was very unhappily married for three years. And I was cheering up, uh, cheering myself up with food, mm -hmm. yes? So when that lady appeared and she told me, you know, you're really sick and you need to cleanse and, and go juice fasting, um, I did not want to hear anything about it until I actually went to the doctors and did get tested. Yes, and when, when doctors, when gynecologists and, and the intern, they, when they yelled at me, listen, you have tumors on your body, like cauliflowers, you're crazy, why, didn't you, why you don't come for regular checkups, and so on. That's when I understood, ah, there was something profound about this lady who came and delivered a message to me. So I went back to the drawing board. I went back to the notes that I took during that meeting, and I decided to do her cleanse. Mm -hmm. And um, in the meantime, I was waiting for the results of the test, but I already started cleansing. So on the way home, literally on the way home, I went by farmer's market. I got myself uh, fresh produce, apples, beetroot, all, all sorts of things that seemed yucky then, okay? Because, you know, it's hard, hard to compete with pizza or, or, or French fries, right? <laughs> or ice cream. So, 
So I was thinking, I don't know how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna I'm going to do it. The option, the the possibility of going into a Polish Sophie hospital, was worse than actually you know doing enemas and juicing. <laughs> okay, so I was actually in a very lucky position, I would say, because I was I was very very blessed because I was cornered to go and heal myself, to at least try it, give it a try, because hospitals were not a comfortable place. You know, you, there were news, news were coming of staff infections, and, and the only people who could afford private clinic back then in Poland were former communists, okay? So, so I had to take care of myself. I had to at least give nature the chance. So I did a cleanse just for three days, and it was radical. It was the most yucky <laughs> experience ever in my life. I felt like I was, I was like a sugar junkie coming out of, you know, without without my dope. Yes. Yeah, with all the withdrawal and, symptoms. Yeah. Yeah, all the withdrawal symptoms. I felt weak. I felt, I I felt like I had fever and cold, and and then I felt shudders, and then I was. I, I, interestingly enough, I never felt really hungry. I just felt just weaker, and I felt like some, my body was going through like an internal process of surgery, like moving things. Yes. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So I spent a lot of time in the bathroom, <laughs> and and a lot of time in the kitchen using. And and the first day, I remember, I was like, my gosh, why am I doing this? This is crazy. Okay. Second day, I still didn't know why I was doing it. But in, on the evening, on the eve of the third day, I finally understood because I started to pass gallbladder stones, column stones, and the things that started to come out of my body and purge were, you know, smelling and yucky, and, and it was just, you know, a horrible sight, but I was just so relieved that it, it, it's leaving my body, mm. right? I could not possibly believe this stuff was inside. Right. So on the on the... On the evening of the third day of my of my cleanse, I already I could tell I lost about seven pounds, mm-hmm. and my stomach flattened, I, my eyes became clear, my skin became clear, I could hear better. So obviously something profound had happened in my body, mm-hmm. and and on the on day four I already felt much better, more energy. I started eating. And what's, what was beautiful is that I didn't crave toxic food again. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like, like my taste buds have changed, yes? I would look at that food and I was like, nah. I, was like, I, I, I naturally gravitated more towards salads and, and fruits and juicy tomatoes. And <laughs> so I went back to the doctors and I had news for them. It's almost like, like, first of all, I knew that whatever diagnosis they had, the test, that they did on me were irrelevant because something prof- profoundly changed in my body during these three days, three day detox. Mm-hmm. And the, another thing, they had news for me. They said, "Oh, you know, you have ovarian cancer, and you have to show up at the hospital and bring your pajama and your toothbrush and so on." And I said, "Listen, I'm going to continue. I just did something like this, and I, I, I had, I passed gallbladder stones. I, I passed colon stones." You know, did you know that they look like walnuts? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it was almost the the dialogue was like like um, Jehovah's Witness trying to convert Hare Krishna. You know, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it was hilarious. It was like two di- like we had two different holy books. <laughs> yes, I can relate. Yes, I can. <laughs> and yeah, and then and of course they you know they didn't want to listen to anything I I had to say. I expected that they would just tell their patients, their clients, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so so what happened was that ever since then I've been on the path of rejuvenation and you know, I gave myself time and after four months within four months I lost eighty three pounds and I was after four months I was completely cancer free. And I was yeah, testing on cool. ultrasound throughout this time. I was testing on ultrasound, I could see how it's shrinking and eventually the test with the doctors confirmed that I was cancer-free. Yes. I wasn't even surprised. I mean, to be honest, you know, everything else shrank about me, so <laughs> why not the tumor, right? Yeah, that is just inc- In four months, you've made such a transformation. Yes. Oh, yeah. And it was, you know, Tara, I, I must 
tell you and, and the audience that physically it was very, very visible, right? But mm -hmm. mentally, the, like on the level of mental and emotional and spiritual, I had to actually hire a life coach afterwards. Mm -hmm. Once I lost weight, because my mind was still thinking that I was fat, sick, tired, unattractive, you know. I was, and my mind was still thinking that I was still this, you know, pimpled, complex woman. So I, ha I, had to, I had to realize, okay, the hardware has changed. I have a new body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I have to change the software so I can enjoy my life, <laughs> you know, or my belief system, right? Yeah, that's a really interesting. I haven't heard it put that way, but that's a fantastic analogy, the hardware and software. I mean, it's so true. Right. And right. I've heard, yeah, I've heard so many people say, I mean, they've longed for, um, obviously not in your situation, but people who want to lose weight, they've been longing for it, and then once they achieve it, then they experience exactly what you're talking about. Internally, they're at a loss, and they just don't know how yeah. to move forward. It's almost, it's almost a shock. I mean, imagine this, yes? I was... From from the time when I entered grade school, so from six years old mm -hmm. until 26, I was a chubby girl, yeah, complex, chubby, pimpled, unattractive. I didn't have a boyfriend in high school. I I wasn't a high school sweetheart. I sucked at sports and so on, right? So kind of an ugly ugly duckling. <laughs> and then what happens is that I I hit the bottom. I'm diagnosed with cancer. And then I heal myself, and what comes out is a butterfly out of a cocoon. Mm -hmm. So, so I had to realize that the belief system was part of my disease. Yeah. The belief system that taught me that I was ugly, unattractive, fat, stupid, unloved, and undesiring love, and undeserving love. All that, all that paradigm of guilt, blame, and shame. You know. Yes. All of that had to go. <laughs> yeah? No, ab I, absolutely. I interviewed um, a lady uh, last week, and I, I'd never heard this before either, but her tagline, which I think is wonderful, is she truly believes that our symptoms are a gift. Oh, yes. And, yeah, and, and you know, obviously not many people think of it that way because symptom is like, oh, my gosh. But, you know, I think it, she is right. They really are. If you can look at it that way, like in your case, I mean, I, I actually I don't know. Were you um, experiencing any symptoms at the time? Yes, I about? was, of course. It's just you that you see, I was my my married life circulated mm -hmm. around my husband. So any mm -hmm. any stuff that was going in my body, mm -hmm. I would I completely ignored it. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because it was like I was I was. This is the way I was raised. This is the way I was taught mm -hmm. to be as a woman, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, put yourself second always, yeah? He comes first. Yes. And so so my life circulated and circumambulated around him. Yeah, so I wouldn't, yeah. I mean, now I, now I remember that, of course, I had pain when I had intercourse. I had blackouts. I felt extremely tired, bloated, you know, raptures mm -hmm. and all sorts of things were happening. But I would just say, say to myself, I don't matter. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> others, others come first, and then yeah. yes. Oh my! What, yeah, and it's so. Mm -hmm. Sorry, no. Sorry, after you. No, I would say it is so profoundly related to feminine body that if we desire healing, we we are pushed to step into our power. Mm -hmm. We're pushed to step into balance, and if we are in a toxic relationship, if we are in a toxic marriage. A lot of times cancer or a disease is exactly a wake-up call and an invitation to, to, to get out of it. Absolutely. And I don't, need to, I, don't need to, I don't need to be an advocate of divorce, mm -hmm. but I know that you know, my marriage nearly killed me <laughs> mm -hmm. because with a soup of toxic emo emotions, and if you are in an environment like this, no matter what you eat, actually, your body cannot digest, cannot process, cannot nourish you properly. Right. Yeah, I, I don't think we are, I mean, a lot of people are fully aware of how important our belief system or lack of really truly is and its role it plays on so many aspects of our life. Yes. It really is. What, what is your secret um, to rejuvenation? 
<laughs> cleansing, mm-hmm. cleansing on the go, fasting. Okay. Yes. You see, um, fasting is the oldest therapeutic and rejuvenating method known to humanity. Okay. Let's let's uh, in, let's think this way. Our body has trillions of cells, mm-hmm. and it keeps producing cells, and also different cells are dying. And it just it, it tries to rejuvenate itself on the go. Mm-hmm. Ideally, human cells never die. It's you know it's been proven already biologically that ideally our cells would not die unless you know the the reason why we age and die is because we get so so overloaded with stress and toxins. Mm-hmm. So when when we are fasting, what happens is that the body goes into autolysis. So it basically begins to eat itself. It begins to eat its own disease tissue, its own old tissue, fat tissue, and it, that way it creates room for the body to create new cells. Yeah. So rapidly, within, if you do a seven-day cleanse, for example, mm-hmm. you are like five years younger. <laughs> and, you know, I feel sorry for, for women who, who don't know about this, I feel that more and more women are waking up to the realization, hey, you know what, it's not faceless that I need. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not another treatment of body contouring or cellulite removal. I actually need to climb. And then the body responds. It firms up the skin. It heals. It might not be so rapid and instant, but it's a, it is a lasting result. And as you continue on that path, it gets better and better and better. I mean, today, you know, I look at the picture that, I look at the woman <laughs> that I see on my old pictures, right? I, I look at my old pictures and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel sorry for that. <laughs> you know, it was me, right? So it's, it's like, I feel that, sh- that, that I was older than, I, was, I, I felt that the, the energy level of, that I had in that time when I was 26 years old, Mm-hmm. was like like I, like if I was a mother of me right right now, yeah. you know I rejuvenated so much. Do you do you mind me asking uh, how old you are? I am forty one. Wow, I know I know I'm not sure if the listeners are familiar with you, but if you're listening, you know, please do go to Evita's website and I mean you must you're absolutely perfect for my my summit with radiance because you <laughs> you exhibit radiance. You absolutely <laughs> do. You Thank exhibit you. radiance and rejuvenation. Thank so, you. you know, you, you absolutely, and obviously I think, you know, it's obviously, it's so clear when, when we see you that you, you're at a completely different uh, place, you know, it's, um, as, as you're saying. And when you, when you look at yourself, yeah. you, can't, you know, you can't recognize yourself. I know. It's almost like, like I cannot, I mean, I cannot, um, I, on the one hand, you know, I still, I, I look this way today, the way I look the way I look today, but I still look at the world through the eyes of, of, of the same girl that was fat, fat, sick, tired, pimpled, depressed. I remember how it felt. Yeah. That's why I would really like to reach out to, to every woman out there, especially those women who feel like that, who feel like they don't have much energy, but just to sit, do couch potato, pop chips, and drink Coke. I mean, I was there. I was there. I was believing that I was, I was, I, I felt like I was wrapped in a blanket that had three holes inside, one to, to eat and two to watch television. And, mm-hmm. and I was living life vicariously, watching some soap operas and, uh, and, you know, not living my own life. Yeah. No, I, I think so many can relate, honestly. They really, and it always speaks volumes that you coming from a personal story you know, because you have experienced it. So I think that's it's even more empowering. Yeah, I feel also another big secret for re- rejuvenation is having clear relationships, mm. you see. And a lot of times we women age faster and also we put on weight when we want to push men away, mm-hmm. okay? If we look around, you know, look, look back at all your relationships, whenever you, you gain weight, or sometimes women do lose weight if they're in, in toxic relationships too. Mm-hmm. So, but usually we put on weight. So 
it's it's a mechanism almost like the like our body is 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 putting weight so that we can protect ourselves yeah. because we are we don't want to be in a relationship with the man that we are. Yes. Right. So if you want to rejuvenate, vote with your feet. Okay. Yeah. And then very often you you your body is cleansing. Why? Because you choose to be happy. Okay. okay? And you know, of course, there, there is different ways to 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 communicate your truth in a relationship. I feel that here in the United States, particularly because of Hollywood, women are programmed to be nice, mm. and we are just con- we are conditioned to just be nice, smile, be fake, not express really what we really feel until we pressure cook our emotions, and we have outbursts, mm. and then. That's when women get called, oh, you're such a bitch, right? right. Mm-hmm. Because we have not learned to speak our truth mm-hmm. with kindness and assertiveness and be real, right. you know? So if you want to rejuvenate, don't be nice. Be real. It's a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually, actually very sexy. <laughs> I don't think people were expecting that answer, so that, that's a good one. Very yeah, good. right? <laughs> Um, so you mentioned cleansing. How often um, do you people do you people? Sorry, do you recommend that people cleanse, and what should they look for um, in a cleanse? Because obviously we hear so much about cleansing, and we want to make sure that we know if we're following a good cleanse versus one that's just really just being marketed. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so how so, often how often do you recommend, and what should we be looking for? Mm-hmm. I recommend to cleanse at least twice a year. That's like a minimum. Think about it this way. You change oil in your car, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, you want to change, change the liquids in your body once in a while. Yeah. You want to build a new blood. You want to purify your blood. And um, it's, for me, cleansing is like hygiene, like brushing teeth. Mm-hmm. Yes. I would rather, if I feel bloated and constipated and inflamed and and I feel like something is, bo- is bothering me in my body, I jump into a cleanse, at least one day cleanse for maintenance. Yeah, one day fast. And um, I'm an advocate of a program that is, that is effective and that is a little bit radical. But I think that radical solutions are the ones that will work in our civilization because our, our world right now is so toxic, mm-hmm. so polluted, and the stuff that is being added into food, it's just like, you know, <laughs> it's mind-blowing, right? It's, we are eating food, human beings are eating food, especially in America, that should not be even on landfill, that the things that are added there. Mm-hmm. So I recommend coffee enemas in the morning uh, or warm water enemas with, with lemon juice, and these help to detoxify the colon and basically open up the, the, the pipes in your body, okay? Mm-hmm. Think about it this way. If the, if the kitchen sink is clogged up and the dishes are dirty, right, and, the, and it's not draining, as a plumber, you would, you know, a plumber would probably walk into the kitchen and say, hmm, it's not draining, right? Let's, let's look at the pipes. Maybe the pipes are clogged up. Yes. And a lot of times that's what I'm seeing with my coaching clients, that they haven't, they take supplements, vitamins, they sometimes, some of them even drink, they try to go juice fasting, like mm-hmm. go juicing. And, and if the colon is clogged up with some old fecal matter, like old solidified food particles, if it's clogged up, then the, none of those beneficial vitamins, minerals are ever getting absorbed. Right. Yes. So that's why cleansing, opening the, the pipes is so, in, so very, very, very good for you, right? Mm-hmm. And then you immediately, you, you, you immediately feel how the body is just like starting to breathe and, and, and can process all the gunk, yes? Mm-hmm. So it, can, it basically helps with discharge, yes? Also, coffee enema supports the liver. And liver is so key when it comes to building alkaline blood, yes? Mm-hmm. And um, so... Juicing throughout the day, fruit, juicing fruits and veggies, that's what I recommend. And the interesting thing is that if you do an enema in the morning, you are not hungry during the day. So that's so beautiful that you can actually go through, go through the whole day juicing 
then you can do enema next day, go through another day juicing, and you're not starving. Because the bacterial flora, the zoo that normally craves in our, in our body, is exactly in the colon, right? And a lot of times we have, you know, some of us have parasites, different microbes living live there, and they, they send an impulse to the brain. They, send, they, they crave fat, they crave sugar, they crave, you know, pizza, ice cream, and so on, right? So they crave for them. Those are not really our cravings. Because we human beings, naturally, we would crave fruit. I mean, think about it this way. We are like apes, right? Mm-hmm. If we agree that, you know, human beings have something, some, something in common with chimps and gorillas mm-hmm. and bonobo monkeys, <laughs> we might want to look at what they eat. Right. Yeah, we have similar teeth, we have similar hands, um, we have very similar digestive process, digestive tract. And we know monkeys eat fruit the whole day. They eat fruit, they, they sometimes nibble on some greens. And most of them, absolutely most of their nutrition is, is vegan and majority is fruit. Yeah? Mm-hmm. So now imagine this. And fruit for me is the key for rejuvenation. So once you cleanse, I encourage that you would eat plenty of fruit, uh, lots of green leafy salads, like gentle leafy greens like lettuces, because they're easy to process. Mm-hmm. You can supplement with, um, if you crave, you can supplement with some baked young potatoes, some pumpkin, some gentle soup. Um, avoid sodium. I would say avoid fat and, and oil because it just clogs up tissues. Yes? Mm-hmm. And, and of course, avoid animal products. I mean, um, I don't know if I need to mention, but if you, if you want to rejuvenate and Think about everything that's alive, yes? And eating, eating dead flesh, there's nothing alive about it. There's nothing rejuvenating about eating a, a dead piece of animal, okay? No matter how much, it's, how much science has gone into proving that it is, I can tell you, if I ever eat something, if I ever eat meat, okay, I mean, I'm immediately constipated. So... It's like my body is pure right now, so it just tells me, like, aha, that's the reaction that people get. Okay. <laughs> okay let, let me ask you this. In your book, How to Cleanse uh, in Seven Days, do you feel the, um, that your cleanse is appropriate for, for everyone, or are there certain um, people with certain health conditions that you feel should avoid a cleanse? You know, I'm not a doctor. Mm-hmm. Right, but I would obviously I would advise that they would consult a, a at least a naturopathic physician, right? Someone who is more holistically minded. Mm-hmm. Mm, of course, medical doctors know nothing about cleansing and detoxing because mm-hmm. nutrition is not part of medical education, right? Right. right. You know, it's mm-hmm. like they learn maybe they study for half half an hour at medical schools. Mm-hmm. You know, the benefits of nutrition. So um, I have never seen anyone yet who would not have benefits cleansing, like benefits on their health health level. The only thing they, uh, that people have to watch out with is that you don't want to cleanse too fast because you don't want the, the detox uh, side effects to basically overwhelm, right? right? Mm-hmm. So it's almost like you're driving a car. You don't want to drive too fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you need to be gentle with your body. You need to understand that this is a sacred experience. It's a sacred time that deserves sacred space. Fasting for centuries have been have been a method of healing and rejuvenation, mm-hmm. and fasting for thousands of years has been regarded as sacred. Because, and to me, it's the most feminine method of healing, and also the most feminine pathway because it's yin. It's non-doing, mm-hmm. right? So um, I, I've seen a lot of people go, receiving amazing benefits on their health level. I mean, if you ever go to my website, you can see the testimonials and those are like stories. Of, I, I get these, these, these stories daily. I, I'm, I'm not no longer posting them because I'm doing some other projects now. Mm-hmm. But there's, there's like, I mean, one lady, she cured 
Hashimoto practically within a month came out of depression and her thyroid is balanced and so on. You know, a lot of times in the, in the feminine disorders, like hormonal disorders mm -hmm. that pertain to us women, they are very much psychosomatic. Yeah. So they, we need to look at, okay, what is my nutrition and what is really my emotional life? Yes, mm -hmm. do I have clarity in both, way, in both ways? If not, what can I do to have clarity? Because clear waters is, is where we want to swim in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well said. Um, let's see, what do you eat every day? Huh. So I eat a lot of fruit. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. And um, again, I'm, I'm, I have a jungle diet, yeah? Why? Not because of, not only because I lived in Hawaii for three years, but because I, you know, this is the way I healed. I when I was when I was cleansing and healing myself, I re realized that my body naturally gravitates towards food that is juicy, colorful, uh, easy to squash in my hand, yes, mm -hmm. and easy to easy to process through my body. It comes in and out. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I did not, when I was healing myself, I did not follow any book. I didn't know anything about vegans or raw foodists or, you know, famous, this famous health gurus and so on. None of that. The only thing I followed was my own body and my own, like, common sense. So I call it monkey diet. <laughs> yes. So Im imagine this, right? If you were never domesticated, right? Mm -hmm. If your mama and, and your daddy didn't raise you. If they didn't spoon feed you as a child, if you were not blackmailed or you have to clear the plate, otherwise you don't see cartoons, right? <laughs> you know, if you, if you didn't go to school canteen, no restaurant, ever, and you have to survive in nature, yes? Imagine you land somewhere, you know, you, you land somewhere in wilderness, you walk through the forest, through the meadows, and what are, the question will be like naturally, on the most primitive, undomesticated level, what is it that your eyes will be gravitating to, right? Mm -hmm. And my answer in my, with my own body, naturally I would be looking, I would be attracted to fruit, yes? So if I would see heirloom tomatoes, hmm. <laughs> if I would see papayas, if I would see bananas, oranges, watermelons, peaches, all of these, all of these yummy, yummy fruits, savory, sour, uh, sweet, there's a whole range of flavors. I would see, I mean, my awareness is that my body salivates for this, yeah? So it's juicy and also, it, as a woman, it makes me, makes me juicy, it makes me alive, it makes me energetic, yeah? Fruit has Fruit embodies two or, or I would say three sources of energy on our planet. Yeah, the principal sources of energy are water, sunshine, and wind on the earth, right? Mm -hmm. So fruit carries a lot of water. It's the best quality of water on the planet because it already came out from, through the roots, through the trunk, the, the branches, and the twigs. So it's, it's a really well-filtered water. Fruit is structured. It has a lot of beauty. And if we cut it in half, we will see that there's sunlight inside there. It, 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 it shines, yeah? yeah. And um, this is why fruit, fruit never makes me constipated or bloated. You know, it's like I've been trying to overeat fruit. Mm. And so far I haven't succeeded. <laughs> you know, the worst thing happens if you overeat fruit, you're just going to go to the bathroom, right? So, hallelujah, awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I eat a lot of fruit. I eat gentle leafy green salad, uh -huh. yeah? yeah, and with plenty of fruit inside, inside the salad, like tomatoes and, and um, cucumbers and all sorts of different sweet fruit as well. Mm -hmm. um, as for salad sauce, I use lemon. Usually it's like the simplest gratifying uh, gar garnish, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what else? And I, I eat, sometimes I eat baked yams, steamed veggies, like steamed beets, steamed um, carrots, mm, maybe a pumpkin soup or raw soups. Yeah. 
But in general, you know, my life doesn't circulate around what, what I'm going to eat. I don't think about it. Mm-hmm. I just follow my saliva. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Monkey <Yeah>. diet. <laughs> Monkey diet. Okay. So yeah. well, I think, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's important to know that, I mean, we're all so unique and so different that, um, you know, because fruit obviously is, is wonderful source for you, but obviously may not be for someone else. Yeah, I think I, I would like to give a word of warning here, yeah? Yes. That if you have never cleansed, okay, mm-hmm. and if you have, you know, someone has never cleansed and has been eating lots of animal products, lots of oil, seeds, nuts, and basically is kind of clogged up in the body, mm-hmm. then eating fruit will be at the beginning very agitating because fruit has a lot of fiber mm-hmm. and it's, like for when we eat watermelon, right, it expands in our tummy mm-hmm. and it gives a tingling, annoying effect. Yeah. So, so eating fruit, if, you're not, if you have never cleansed, is, is not a pleasant feeling. Yes? That's why I recommend this after cleansing, after you detox. Okay. Yeah? All right. Okay, so, so your, your cleanse then in seven days, um, is that primarily fruit or is that after, as you just said? Um, no, 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 no. I, my program is actually a 90-day program, okay? So oh, first sorry, we yeah, do a... Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, yeah. no, I, I was talking about one of your books. It's How to Cleanse in Seven Days. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was just wondering... Oh, yeah. yeah, sorry, I was, I, was, I was jumping up to your book. Okay, so the book How to Cleanse in Seven Days, right now it's out of print, but it's coming back soon. Okay. So major, mainly it's, it's fruit. And also it's chakra by chakra assignment for each day. Okay. Yeah? However, before someone would jump to a seven-day cleanse, I encourage they do a five-day cleanse, first three-day cleanse, 21-day challenge just to eat simple and healthier. So it's not, some, it's not something you're going to jump into like next day. Right. Yeah? Okay. It's a process to basically shift pH in our body. Mm-hmm. Yeah? When our bodies are acidic, this is when we are sick, fat, pimpled, depressed, negative, tired. When, when we alkalize our bodies, then that's when we have beauty, rejuvenation, euphoria, and, and that's when we crave healthy food, naturally. We discover pleasure in that. Okay. All right. Now, that's a very good point you make, because I think some people, um, you know, especially if you are feeling so tired and overwhelmed you want to jump on something because it's a catchy title you know how to cleanse in seven days but as you make a very good point you know baby steps and you know you've yes. got to yeah it's very important i think especially you want you know, to yeah you, know, you want to build you want to get get your body used to this process yes yeah yes because you know imagine it's like if your body has been acidic and toxic mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You are like a choo-choo train heading from San Francisco to Los Angeles, right? High speed. Yes. On on soda, on you know fast food, whatever, right? Coffee. I mean, let's face it: the pressure of life today is really tough, right? Okay. It's getting faster and faster, and we are more and more stressed, more and more in a hurry. So, if you want to now stop this train and 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 change the direction and go alkaline, right? From acidic, you want to go into alkaline pH. It's not going to be a pleasant feeling, mm-hmm. okay? However, I would like to tell you, it takes three days only for human blood pH to change from acid to alkaline. So if you cleanse just for three days, you already have results. On day four, you feel better. On day five, you have energy through the roof and so on, yes? So the three days are like critical for transformation. Don't give up until you reap the benefits. Mm-hmm. Right, well said, yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, most people Yeah, most people don't know, right? So they get detox effects and they give up. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, you just need to plow through. Yeah. As we as we know, we need we need a balance between the nutrition and the mental aspect. What is your spiritual practice? Ha, huh, I would say at this moment, I would say clarity of relationship, clarity of life. Okay. And um, I, I do meditate a lot, and I, have, I practice yoga. And um, 
I do not connect it with any particular religion. Mm-hmm. I try to connect myself as much as possible with nature. I believe nature is the expression of the divine. Nature is the expression of the will of God. Mm-hmm. And nature wants, nature always wants to heal us and, and save us. Yeah? So it's my, my spiritual practice, my temple is, is nature, for sure. I feel that nature is becoming a luxury and scarcity on the planet. Mm-hmm. So as much as possible, I would like to connect to, with nature and being my true self, my authentic self, being real. Right. Yeah. Perfect. And um, I, I know that there's a lot of, yeah, being grounded. And, yeah. you know, right yeah. now, right now ma- being a mother is my spiritual practice. Mm-hmm. I'm a mom of a six-year-old boy. Being a partner, being a businesswoman is also my spiritual practice, and I find a lot of fulfillment in this area, mm-hmm. a lot of joy. And I feel, I feel, it's so awesome when you when you can ask, okay, what is it that really gives me joy, and you can turn this into your business, into your daily life, because then it's really, it truly becomes your spiritual practice, right? Mm-hmm. And in the same time, it brings, you know, it pays your bills. Yeah. Fantastic. No, I think we're both very lucky to say that, which is um, right. very, very lucky indeed. Should be uh, practice a lot of gratitude for that, yes. And lastly, in your experience, um, what are the keys to radiance at any age? Hmm. To <laughs> summarize it, huh? Yes. <laughs> Okay, so I would say seek beauty, mm-hmm. seek beauty, celebrate beauty, surround yourself with beauty, and shine beauty from inside out. Affirm your own beauty. Never allow, never allow anyone to, to project anything else but what you truly, truly are. And we are beautiful beyond imagination. Truly, no matter what you look like, no matter how, what is your age, you are beautiful. You are so beautiful that if you only knew how beautiful you are, you would just like jump out of joy. And that's what we need to affirm. Like, and then it begins to shine from inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what I'm hearing over and over with you know my my guest speakers. It truly does shines. You know, I think a lot of people are hoping to hear from, oh, it's this bottle, buy this jar, and it's not. It's not coming no, from the it's, jar. It's no, ma- it's not one more thing you put into your mouth. It's actually one less. Yeah. Well, so a lot of uh, that radiance actually shines when you simplify your life. When you, look through your, when you look through your wardrobe and you say, you can ask yourself, okay, well, what, what clothes do I really enjoy wearing? What clothes love me? What dresses love me? What 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 shoes love me and all the rest you can give to some other other women, mm-hmm. yeah. When you can look at your food and you can ask, okay, what is really food in my fridge? What really is food? What is not food and it's still sitting there, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. the be- the beauty and radiance come from simplest from simplicity. Yes. One yes. one less one less. Yeah. And more freedom. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Elita, for taking the time to share your wisdom with us today. Um, before we end our chat, would you mind sharing your contact details um, so people can learn more about you? And I know you've put together a very generous free gift for our listeners. Would you also mind sharing that with us? Absolutely. So um, my website is evitaramparte.com, E-V-I-T-A-R-A-M-P-A-R-T-E, Evita ramparte.com and I have a book that I would like every woman to to read and please uh, let me know how you like it mm-hmm. and I, I, I trust it will inspire you immensely uh, the book is called The Bliss of Cancer yeah so under this controversial title with controversial cover there is a, a message of freedom for all women Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very, very generous Thank you so talk. much for, for having me here and sending lots of love to everyone. Yeah, thank you so much again for participating in the summer. We really enjoyed having you as a speaker and learning more about you, your journey, and your wisdom. I hope we can chat again soon. Thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Sending love. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Bye for now. Oh.